The fundamental thing is that every application has what we call DNA. And DNA, uh, it's really the, the, the core that underlies every, um, every application. Uh, and so the place where you start is you look at what's called the DNA file, dna.json. And here we have it, uh, the example in Clutter. So here, here we see the directory structure of um, the current master Clutter branch. And um, so first of all, you see several subdirectories here. And everything that is really uh, Holochain specific is in the DNA code. Because so for us, every Holochain app um, is a DNA, like in a, because it's a di distributed application. And in order for this distributed application to work, every node needs to, to have the same set of rules, the same starting code, like in, in um, organisms where many, um, many cells share the same DNA. So each node is like a cell in a body, and therefore each node has to have the exact same DNA. That's the way it works in our body. Otherwise, it would be a different organism, right? different app. So when you start out, what you'll see is that the DNA directory has a, direct, a subdirectory called clutter, but the main file there is dna.json, which uh, is sort of like the top level DNA. That clutter subdirectory is what we would call um, a zone, which is related to the term uh, chromosome, because the idea is that any the DNA is built out of sections, separate chromosomes, that is, it's kind of the unit of composability. In this example, we just have one unit, which is the clutter unit. And you actually can see inside the DNA file, as we're scrolling along here, there's some, some properties, version, UUID, which required version, and so on. But the biggest section you get to is zones. And this has one zone in it, which is clutter, which maps, the, maps to the directory, the clutter directory. Yeah. So basically, we, we could have several zones, and the idea is that we, um, that we then also have libraries of zones with certain um, code that we want to reuse, like for instance, membrane code uh, or uh, immune system code, which is like uh, uh, the ability to exclude certain bad actors from the application. And so I get, we guess we, there will be many um, boilerplate code that we just want to, to just plug into an application. And the zone is the unit of composability, uh, which we yeah. If you want to think about it as a library, that's a perfectly fine way to think about it, but we really love these biological metaphors. And, and it helps actually. It's not just for show. It actually helps in thinking about how to do agent-centric um, development to think in these biological terms. But so let's look at one, this zone and see what it's constructed out of. So first of all, what we see here, um, there is a ribosome type and a code file, clutter.js. So, um, Ribosomes, or in this um, biological metaphor, um, ribosomes are these structures that, that pass the DNA that is being sent out as, as mRNA out of the core and that actually assemble proteins. So the, the thing that interprets the DNA. Um, so in our case, what interprets the DNA is the virtual machine environment. And in this case, it's a JavaScript virtual machine environment that's in interpreting it. We have also implemented a Lisp one as just to make sure that we can actually do this with multiple languages, and we will be doing a lot more of them. Our big refactor coming up is going to uh, switch JavaScript from a current version that's a, an implementation inside of um, Go to actually using either V8 or SpiderMonkey as the implementation engine. And I would love to see a Ruby ribosome at some point. Yes, and uh, Haskell and all the rest that uh, we know will show up because uh, people love to code in different languages. So that shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, and maybe you just mentioned the big refactor. So we just met here in London and um, discussed several changes. We want to make learning from the current alpha version already. And before we go forward, we want to, to introduce some, some changes to, uh, to also to the DNA. Um, so they are right now just on some notes and in our heads and in the next week we will want to start to flesh them out. So uh, actually what you see here is still the old version. Um, so it will be, and we hope it will be a bit more um, easy to use and um, easy to... Um, yeah, but it's perfectly reasonable to dive in with this because all the basic contracts are the same and the, the evolution path is not going to be um, super difficult. Yeah. Alright, so let's go ahead and describe a little bit more how the zones work. Yeah. So um, there's a code file, clutter.js, and, and that is, um, yeah, that's, that's the actual code of the zone and where functions and validation rules are defined. 
Um, but then we have some more um, uh, meta declaration, yeah. declaration in, in this DNA file, especially for entries. So, so you can think of entries as the data model. That's the yeah. easiest way to think about entries. And you're defining, but it's, it's very important because the entries are what are added onto the local agent's chain as, as commits, in essence. There's a commit command that adds in the, the entries onto the local chain. This is where the local agent is making statements in the game, <laughs> which is an application. And also those entries are what are shared to the distributed hash table. Yeah. So I would even say, I mean, this is at the core of what, what Holochain is doing, making sure you have data integrity and that all, although the application is distributed and although this is not blockchain where everybody assumes the, the same, um, how would you, I mean, the question would be, how can you still uh, make sure that these different nodes are not just branching off in, in different realities? So, and the fundamental answer in Holochain is validation rules. The part, that is, that is the main part of the DNA. It is code that validates these entries. And that needs to be the same on every node. Right. So, um, which means even if I would locally override these validation rules in order to somehow hack the system, in order to whatever it is, create a post uh, somewhere where I don't not allowed to or create more balance on my account or whatever. Um, if I would do this locally and then try to, to push this information into, into the public, into the DHT, all these other nodes have their own copy of the validation rules and can easily tell that this is not valid and, and reject it. And then at some point maybe even reject my node when I, when I continuously try to do that. So, in terms of the DNA, one of the fundamental things is to define the different types of data that, you're, that, that exist in the application. And so that's what the entries do here. We have, for example, a handle, which is how you would be referred to in the clutter space. And, for example, a post. So we're declaring the different types of data that exist. And also, for example, in the case of the post, we may be pointing to the fact that it has a structure, and that structure is defined by a schema file. And that's what post.json does. If you want to just click to that file, you can see that post.json would say... Uh, it has, uh, a, um, it's a message, uh, has a message type and it has, stamp. yeah, Integer. it has a message itself and it has a timestamp uh, of when it happened. It's very, very simple. And both are required. Yeah. So, and this is, this is basically like a, um, um, a built-in validation mechanism that is validating against this, the schema file. But right. you can, as we will show, you can define your own validation uh, code. So the other type of entries that you see defined in here are what are called links. So you see that the data format of a post links and a handle links and a directory links is a links data type. This is a built-in data type which allows us to create um, relationships, basically linking relationships in, um, <coughs> excuse me, linking relationships in um, the distributed hash table, which otherwise would simply be a sparse data space that you can't, you couldn't connect data to, um, and so in in essence, it's the way in which you can think of the data as a graph, and this is how you declare that. And this is one of the um, things that we change in the new DNA. Um, so um, you won't have to declare all these link types yourself, but we uh, we added associations uh, to the ontology of right. of our API, so you can. It's a bit like this Rails like has many, you can say user has many posts or user links to many posts. That's just because we're really embarrassed that everybody has to type in all yeah. of these different declarations that just say post links links. It, it shouldn't be that way. But underlying that is the case that you are committing to your own chain a relationship between two things that you have committed previously. All right, let's skip down and look a little bit at the functions that also are declared inside the DNA. So, um, in this case, there's a bunch of um, test things that are about properties, but let's look at one that's more interesting. Let's look at add post, right? This would be one of the main things that you would do inside a Clutter or Twitter or social media type application is you would add a new entry into uh, a new post or a new meow, as we call them, um, into, uh, onto your chain. That's what you would say. So why don't we take a look at the code that matches the add post? Yeah. Maybe, maybe let me say, I, I will open the file here, but let me add. Um, so these in the DNA file are declarations of functions. That has to be defined in your code, 
But of course, you can have m many more functions in your code. Yeah. Um, but those functions that you declare that there are being exposed, as you see here, exposure yeah. public. Those are being exposed to the outside of the node, and especially the I mean the outside of the app itself, which also is the UI. So we haven't talked about UI yet. Um, the UI is loosely coupled, so um, it's it's really just. <clears throat> and and actually, we we are also thinking about um, this scope and and an application brow Holochain browser thing that uh, would run different apps and have have maybe even general purpose or automated generated UI for that. But so far, um, of course, you you will have to write your own UI, and that's what you what you see here in uh, in these UI directories. Um, Basically, right now, what Holochain is doing is just taking um, the content in the UI directory and serving it as um, as a web application uh, on a port. Um, in this particular example, what you're seeing is UI automation and UI source. That's because the UI here is written as a React app, which gets compiled into a UI the actual UI directory that would be served by the application. Um, that's a little... Uh, detailed, but that's why you're seeing it that way. If you were to look at some of our other applications, you would see a directory that says UI by itself. Um, and, and those are some of the um, applications that we wrote using uh, like jQuery or more simple um, uh, for, uh, ways of creating the, the JavaScript based or the web based um, user interface. But let's try to follow this one through a little yeah. bit. Okay. So you wanted to look at add, add post. post. Right, that's the simplest one. So here on the right side we have our Clutter.js which holds all the code that Clutter is right now, basically. And let me just search for add post. Oops, no, I'm this one. Oops. There's no add post. Oh, that's because I think you're in the user interface, no? Oh, it's is it called post? I think that that was this might be uh, um, an artifact from some previous. Uh... Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Uh, so there, that looks like an artifact uh, function. Okay. Why don't we just look at post? We'll then? look at post, right? <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, well, yeah. Let, let's let's look at the the post function um, that is defined here in the DNA on the left side, and that we have that we see here the JavaScript function in our code on the right side. So um, yeah, so for context, so Clutter is our our Twitter clone, and I mean posting meows as we call it is of course one of the most important. Uh, uh, functionalities here um, and um, the main um, the main two function calls and API calls you see here are these two commits um, and with commit you you add a new entry a previously uh, defined entry type to your source chain and what it also does automatically is if this entry type is declared as public, it's pushing it to the DHT. So, but in your application, all you have to do is call commit with an object that is um, that will be validated against the schema, or if if provided, but uh, will be validated against validation rules. And you have to tell commit what kind of type it is here. So what you're seeing here is that the basic functionality of post is to commit the post that was passed in from, um, as a, a put from the, or as a, um, a, a post through the user interface. Um, and then what it does is it posts a link, which associates the, if you look here at the, the posts links um, commit, it creates a, a link between the, um, a base, which is me, which we got here, and um, uses and, and the post itself between yourself and the post. In other words, it's saying that this post was made by me. So we're using our linking um, function to be able to make an association between our own identity and the post. And what's interesting here is that 
because of the way um, DHTs work, identity, the hash of your own public key, exists in the DHT in the same way any other data exists in the, in the DHT. That's one of the key patterns that makes this all possible. And so you can use your own identity as a hash and refer to it and attach um, links to that hash just like you could attach it to anything else. Now the other thing that's done in this particular set of code is figure out what are all the mentions inside the text and, um, and it looks like it's using create mention which is going to have more links. We could go look at create mention and I'm sure what's going to be in there is um, more links um, to other users uh, of this particular um, um, post. Yeah, but before we go there, let me let me just um, focus a bit again on the key here and um, wh what you implicitly said that um, so every entry is addressed by its hash in Holochain and when you commit an entry what you get back is the key what is here stored in this variable key is the hash of this entry and that's what you also need in order to to retrieve it again that's so, why it's a distributed hash table. You use the hash to retrieve the data. Exactly. So, and um, that is how you would use, maybe, maybe we could look at that, how you would use this link structure to get this post again. Because what we, when we link, basically what we're doing here by, by adding these link entries is that on my, um, my identity, my agent entry, which is this, stored in me here, which is also a key, is also a hash. On this hash we, we store um, a collection of other hashes and to this collection we now add one, which is the hash of this new post. So with that we can then, if somebody wants to see our posts, can, can query this list and get all the, the hashes of the post that I created and then use those hashes to, to get the, the post itself. So we can actually go look at that. I'm sure that's what this get post by function is doing. Yeah. So let's look for get post by posts by. There we go. Right. Yeah. So this is a list of people, is there are a list of hashes of their public key or their address that's being passed in. And for that list, it's calling do, do, do get link load for that author and pulling back the posts and collecting them up into a, um, a value. So we could look at do get link load to see yeah. how that works. There's a couple Oops. different, that's a generalized yeah. function. That is. Right. So this get links is the API function. Yeah. So and... What you see here, the, what you always have to provide is the base. So links always work, they, they uh, link off of a base to something else and they are stored on the base. It's like, a, it's like meta information for this base entry. And you can basically uh, branch link off from every entry in Holochain. So here it's just simply asking for the pay for for that particular tag. In that case, it was a post that's linked onto the user ID. It's it sets the load equals true value because what it's returning is not only the hash that was associated with that link, but then it goes and automatically grabs the data and returns that back. So this is an example of how you would use that. Yeah. Why don't we pop quickly into one of the tests and just show the test that that would test this? Yeah. So you can see that in the testing environment. Or do you have anything else you wanted uh, to say about this? The tag. I just want to talk, ah, yes. talk about the tag. So um, if we go back to where we used it here, get post by, you see there is a string post that is provided, which is passed into as tag here. So um, you go back to the post where you see when you committed it, or even any place here, you can see uh, here's one where you're committing a directory links. Yeah. You set the tag to handle. Back in post, it was setting the tag to post because it's basically a semantic identifier on top of the two items that are being linked. Yeah. So it's kind of like a generalized version of RDF if you're, if you're familiar with RDF. Yeah. So it's, it's just a way to, um, to have different sets of links uh, like um, uh, what is it, posts and uh, follows, for instance. I mean, from my user um, entry, I want to connect posts that I'm, I'm posting, I want to connect posts where I mentioned, and I want to connect uh, other users that I'm following. 
these are all links added to my my uh, agent entry, um, but in order to not confuse them, we have these tags. Right. So you wanted to go to the test? I just think that's the la sort of the last thing in terms of figuring out how to explore Holochain. You can follow through the code, but you can also look at the tests because you, we always suggest writing. Um, so yeah, so just like look, let's look at posts because that's posts. where we're going to be testing posts. Right. So our testing harness um, is really very simple right now. It just create, it creates a list of tests inside a test file. And these tests get, get um, executed in order that they're put in the file. And each one of the tests has a little statement at the top, which is a convey statement, which is just a little bit of English code that would tell, English um, description that would tell you what this test is supposed to do. Uh, and then the basic thing that you would think about is, is there's a function name that's being called, the input that's being provided to that function, and the expected output. That's what almost all of these have. Uh, so each of these objects here in this array represents a function call with expected output. Yeah. So in, the, in this case, um, this test is saying, well, let's just make sure that when you call new handle and you, you create a handle, you're going to get an output that is the new handle. And so what, of course, is interesting here is that the expected output, well, the output is actually really a side effect. What you're testing is that when you created a new handle, that the handle was added to the chain, right? So the output of the function is going to be a hash, but the question is, what hash is it? Well, the hash is the hash that should have been added to your local chain. And in this case, it says h2 because the hash should be the, the, the counting back down the stack, the second hash down because creating a new handle actually creates two hashes. It creates the hash of the link that we were talking about before and actually the hash of the handle entry itself. And so what was returned by the function new handle should be that second hash which should have been on your, on your chain. So this is a, a way of being able to test what's happening to your chain and what's being added to it. Yeah. So we uh, have several of these, um, these, these Substitutions. Exactly. With percent sign, percent h2 percent. Here you see r1, for instance, which is the um, the last result. Mm -hmm. So the, this this is how I can access what this function returned. And there there are several more which are defined in um, in our documentation. Yep. Um, which we maybe want to mention here at this point. Oh yeah, we can. I'll, the, um, so the yeah, pop to it. That's a good idea. So, um, I think so, you, okay, yep. So, first of all, maybe this is where we got this code from, Clutter. This is uh, uh, on GitHub, um, Holochain Clutter. Um, and um, the Holochain repository itself is on GitHub Meta Currency Holochain. Although that's likely to change too, but don't worry, yes. there'll be a forward. Yeah, but right now it's still there. And, um, so there's a wiki, and in the wiki, when you click, where is it, App Development API, it links to our own site, developer.holochain.org, slash API reference, and um, so here you see... All the different functions. All the functions. Um, so, for example, there's commit, yeah. right, which defines how that works. And there's also inside here, if you go up to the sidebar, You'll see, um, if you look for articles for app developers, this, going back to the testing, uh, yeah, if you look at test-driven development, app development, here's where you see the description of how that works, and here are all the different replacement strings that are available to you in writing your tests. Cool. That's a, a very rough and, uh, <laughs> I think, rough and scratchy overview of how you might um, dive into figuring out code and have some idea about um, what's going on inside of Holochain. We hope you enjoy it and that it's useful to you. Stay tuned to our awesome API updates and um, if you have any questions, pop in our chat, chat.holochain.org. We're there, we answer and questions. I, we are both there and uh, many more from our team. And also the community is growing and we have a bunch of wonderful folks who are diving right in and answering people's questions. And, uh, and it's pretty fun and pretty exciting. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching, indeed.